The Denver Broncos are becoming one of the NFL's most interesting stories this season, and one of the NFL's latest decisions puts that in the spotlight. We'll break all that down and much more in today's brand new, freshly brewed installment. Good morning, Broncos. Good morning, Broncos country. Welcome into another installment of GMB. This is your daily Mile High Sports Broncos show. You get us here every single weekday, Monday through Friday from 9 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. And right now, the Broncos are quickly becoming one of the NFL's more interesting stories so far this season. They were in the spotlight early on in the year, but not for the reasons that many people had hoped for or had expected. And they were dogged on quite a bit. But now the Broncos are in the spotlight for yet another reason. We'll dive deep into that here on today's episode of the show here on Mile High Sports YouTube page. Real quick, folks, Mile High Sports, our YouTube page is the hub for everything you need to know about all of your favorite Colorado sports teams, the Denver Broncos, the Denver Nuggets. We have the Pickaxe and Roll podcast hosted by Ryan Blackburn as he breaks down everything that's going on with your favorite defending NBA champions. Get some Colorado Buffs coverage as well. And on top of that, Make sure you download the Mile High Sports app on your smartphone, your Android, Apple, whatever store you have, Mile High Sports has an app. And so in that, it gives you access to milehighsports.com where you get daily written content coverage of your favorite teams up to the minute, breaking news. You get all that action there instantaneously, milehighsports.com. But with that said, you asked the question, Cody, what do you mean? The Denver Broncos are one of the NFL's more interesting teams right now going forward. Well, the NFL tends to think so, folks, because we have some breaking news in a sense. The Broncos, they are getting another primetime game. Now, on December 16th, the Broncos are set to take on the Detroit Lions in their final road game of their upcoming three-game road trip, which commences this Sunday on the road against C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans. Then next week, they'll play the Los Angeles Chargers. The next week, they will play Saturday night football on the NFL Network taking on the Dan Campbell, MCDC, Detroit-led Lions. And look, they're playing really good football right now, sitting at an 8-3 and three record. Obviously, one of the top teams in the NFC Conference right now. They're third in terms of the seeding if the playoffs were to begin today as we are discussing things. But I think overall, people want to know about the Denver Broncos. Look, the Detroit Lions, they're already going to more than likely solidify themselves in the playoffs this upcoming season, especially after they missed out last year after the terrific run that they've had. But I think the storylines are very interesting, right? You look at the Detroit Lions that got off to the bad start that they did last season. They went on a run. They should have made the playoffs last year. Unfortunately, the, the whole record scenario and everything like that kind of forced them on the outside to not make it into the final wild card spot, which to me was a little bit of a travesty. The NFL dropped the ball there because the team with the worst record ended up getting in than the Detroit Lions, but it is what it is. The Denver Broncos early on the season found themselves in a similar predicament, starting off one and five. They're, they've won five straight games. They're six and five. They have a chance here. These next couple of weeks against the Texans and Chargers are two very winnable games that could propel them to an eight and five record, but you can only focus on the present. So that's going to be their matchup this Sunday against CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans. But I think when you look at the inverse of everything, how things have culminated here for this Broncos team this season, a lot of people wrote them off, including myself. Like there were times I'm like, okay, hey, after that 50 point loss to the Dolphins, I said, okay, hey, maybe the Broncos, this isn't their year. But then I started looking at some other things as well. And I started thinking to myself, you know what? Like if Denver makes these changes, they can still win games, right? Even though they're one and five, like the room for error is going to be small, but they can do it. They've gone on a run. It's not because I said it, right? But it's because those guys in that locker room believe in one another. They played really good football as of late. They played complimentary on offense, defense, and special teams. And now, hey, five straight games that they've won. It makes things very interesting. And that was one of those games on the NFL schedule as is that was to be determined. They were trying to figure out, is this going to go to a Sunday game, which is going to get a normal CBS or Fox broadcast schedule? No, this is going primetime, folks. NFL Network, December 16th, 6.15 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff. And that's going to be a very, very interesting game. And I'm very curious if I could just peek into the future. What is that game going to look like for the Broncos? What is that game going to look like for the Detroit Lions? The Broncos don't have a lot of room for error. There's six games remaining for them. In my opinion, I think they can only afford to lose maybe one game the rest of the season. That's a tough ask, but if you embrace the mindset of week to week, it's certainly doable. It's certainly possible because the odds were against the Broncos beforehand because they had a slate of games that were coming up against the Chiefs, against the Bills, 
the Vikings, and Denver's gone on to win those games. Or even the Cleveland Browns will throw them in, into the mix as well. Green Bay as well. So that five-game win streak didn't look like it was very possible for Denver when they were sitting at one and five, but here they are. They rattled out five straight games. So here we are right now, five to six weeks left in the regular season. Anything is possible. So the NFL believes that the Broncos have become an interesting team right now across the NFL. They're a big story right now, which is certainly welcomed. And the turnaround has been spectacular to watch. So we love to see that here for Denver as they progress another primetime game. And then the next week, they'll follow it up with another primetime game on the NFL Network on Sunday. I believe it's the NFL Network against the New England Patriots Christmas Eve. My preference would be a day game so I could actually go home and enjoy Christmas Eve with my loved ones. But you know what? We're going to watch football. We're going to embrace it. We're going to have fun along the way. So out of Denver's six remaining games, they still have two more primetime games. That is a great sign that the NFL is absolutely interested in what they have going on here. But that wasn't the only thing that happened for the Broncos on Thursday. There was a special honor handed out to one of Denver's key players so far this season. In the month of November, part of their win streak, this guy is a big reason why they maintain their winning streak and why they've been undefeated in the month of November, and that is Broncos kicker Will Lutz, or as the fan base would say, Big Deal Will or Big Nuts Lutz. That's some nicknames that fans have thrown out there. I'll let you guys run with whatever you want to run with there. I'm just the messenger here. But Will Lutz was named as the AFC's Special Teams Player of the Month for the month of November. And just some insight there in the month of November, Will Lutz was 11 of 11 on field goal attempts attempted and made. He was three of four on extra points. Obviously, the missed extra point coming against the Buffalo Bills here. But 11 of 11 on field goals, that is clutch, including a performance on Sunday Night Football against the Minnesota Vikings, where if it weren't for Will Lutz, the Broncos probably don't win that game. He made a career high, five of five field goals in that game, 15 total points. Denver scored one touchdown, kicked the extra point there, and they held on for a 21 to 20 victory against the Minnesota Vikings. But I think it's also important to, hey, like Will Lutz, like uh, this was a move that was under scrutiny by a lot of people in Broncos country initially when it happened during the end of preseason. Denver signed him. I mean, Denver traded for him. And a lot of people are like, oh, Sean Payton's just going after guys that he knows and trusts. There's a reason he trusts in big deal. Will now I would say his Broncos career didn't get off to the best start week one. He missed the field goal attempt against the Raiders. He missed the extra point. Denver loses that game by one point. If he makes the field goal and the extra point, Denver wins that game. And maybe right now we're having a different conversation about maybe Denver being at seven and four versus, you know, six and five at this point. So we can always look back in hindsight, but this is a big honor for Will Lutz. He's very important for what the Broncos have done so far on special teams. He's been a big part of their turnaround, and he's been pretty efficient. Now, according to the team's official press release on Thursday afternoon, Will Lutz is the ninth different Bronco and the fifth kicker to win the award of AFC Special Teams Player of the Month. He joins Brandon McManus, who won it in 2015, Connor Barth, who won it in 2014, Matt Prater, who won it in 2011 and 2009, and Jason Elam, who won it in 2001 is the only kickers in franchise history to collect the honor. Now, I think some other numbers too, that we got to take a look at where has Lutz been efficient. He's been 24 of 26 on field goal attempts attempted and made so far this season. Now I think these numbers are great. He's eight for eight from 20 to 29 yards. He's 10 of 11 from 30 to 39 yards. He's three of three from 40 to 49 yards. And he's three of four from 50 to 59 yards. We get that according to, our friends over there at Pro Football Reference. So big deal wheel coming in clutch here for the Denver Broncos, adding intrigue to an already good Thursday for them as they are named as one of the NFL's most interesting teams. Having a game flex to primetime is big, but there's a big primetime game, essentially, not necessarily in the primetime action, but most of America will be able to watch this week's game between the Broncos and the Texans on CBS. But with that said, Broncos country, we're going to have you covered with our Thursday practice report. What's the latest on Jerry Judy? After he missed Wednesday's practice, did he come back onto the field during Thursday's practice? You're going to get that on this morning's freshly brewed installment of Good Morning Broncos. Real quick, let me tell you about Superbook Sports, the sponsor of today's episode of GMB. Win a trip to the biggest football game of the year, courtesy of our friends over there at Superbook Sports. Superbook, they will fly you and a friend to Las Vegas for February's championship game, and they will also give you two tickets to the game, plus a three-night hotel stay. All you have to do is place a $25 same-game parlay between now and January 7th, and you're automatically entered to win. So wager and win a super trip to Las Vegas, courtesy of Superbook Sports. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey Nuggets fans, Ryan Blackburn here, host of the Pickaxe and Roll podcast on Mile High Sports. 
We've got the best Denver Nuggets coverage around, so make sure not to miss an episode and subscribe down below to the Mile High Sports YouTube channel. Nuggets off to a great start. Make sure not to miss a thing on Mile High Sports. Shout out to our friend Ryan Blackburn of the Pickaxe and Roll podcast. He does great content covering the Denver Nuggets. You can check out his podcast, but also check out his written work on milehighsports.com here. Let's get to our Broncos Thursday practice report as you get ready to pour yourself yet another cup of coffee as we get ready to conclude. I almost said conclude. That's not a real word. Conclude today's episode of GMB. I appreciate you all for bearing with me. Sometimes I get a little tongue twisted doing this stuff here. But anyways, the Broncos are back on the practice field on Thursday at the Centura Training Center practicing indoors as they're preparing for an indoor game here on Sunday. And during a stretch of these three road games, they're going to play three straight indoor dome games. LA is a little different because it's hybrid. It's it's a dome, but it's got some open air into it. So there's a little nice luxury that they have there at SoFi Stadium. But for the injury report, everybody wants to know, is Jerry Judy making progress after he missed Wednesday's practice with a groin injury? So we attended practice on Thursday. We were out there watching team stretch. Jerry Judy was there for team stretch for the Broncos here. But when they transitioned from team stretch to individual period, Jerry ended up going off to the other field. He ended up going outside with the trainer to the side field. Imagine he did some work there. We weren't able to see it, but then we didn't see him during individual period. Toward the end of individual period, we started to see Jerry Judy came back in. He didn't have his helmet with him, though. But the Broncos' official injury report designates him an, as an upgraded, limited participant. So he was upgraded from DMP on Wednesday to limited on Thursday. So when they kicked this out after the individual period, when they went into their team period, we never get to watch those things. So we have no idea what's going on. Not sure if Jerry participated in that portion, which gives him a limited designation. So I think that is something we have to keep our eye on here going forward, especially as we go into Friday's practice here today at the Centura Training Center. So Jerry was one of three other of four players total who were limited in Thursday's practice. Kicker Will Lutz with a right hip designation that obviously happened on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. I'm very, very curious. We'll find out if the Broncos have hosted any tryouts for any kickers, but I'm not sure what Will Lutz status is for Sunday, which coming off the AFC Special Teams Player of the Month, you need big deal Will into the mix here, and he's going to be very crucial for you against the Texans. So if he's unable to go, I'm very curious to see if the Broncos do anything, which they're not going to go into a game without a kicker. They'll have a contingency plan, so we'll have you updated at milehighsports.com. For more cornerback Damari Mathis, he popped up on the injury report limited with a back issue. Now we saw him in team stretch. We saw him for individual period, but then during individual period, he kind of pulled up a little bit, spotted him with the trainer. Not sure exactly, you know, how, how deep or whatever it may be, but we'll continue to monitor it here in Friday's practice. And then wide receiver Marvin Mims, who's been dealing with a hamstring injury. He's been limited Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see if he upgrades to being a full participant here on Friday, but I can tell you this watching him at practice during individual period. He looked like he was moving without limitation, so that's trending in the right direction. I don't think there's any legitimate concern, but if Jerry Judy is unable to go, or let's say Marvin Mims suffers a setback and is unable to go, Brandon Johnson, watching him in person on Thursday, he looks good. He looks crisp with his route running. He looks like he's ready to rock and roll, so there will be an addition of him in combination with Lil Jordan Humphrey, maybe somebody else, David Sills, who's obviously been called up three straight games. He could be promoted to the active roster at some point, We'll wait to see if Brandon Johnson is going to be in the mix to play. But I, I think that's where things are trending here. Like Denver, I think, is going to be okay on the injury side of things. And then full participants, Baron Browning, wrist designation that's been on there for a couple of weeks, full participant like he was on Wednesday. So no concern there. Two players did not participate, however, in Thursday's practice, and that was veteran tight end Chris Manhurts and veteran defensive tackle Mike Purcell. Not injury-related. Both of these guys were getting veterans' days off, getting rest there. So they were in attendance, and so it's something to keep an eye on. And we also mentioned Greg Dulcich as well, continuing to make progress as he now has transitioned this week on Wednesday, was on the side field. Thursday was on the side field getting work with trainers. And Sean Payton told us last month that he believes that Dulcich will play again this season, and Denver could potentially get him back maybe towards the end of the season. There's obviously six games left. Could he maybe return with three or two games left? And if so, is Denver in the conversation for the playoffs still? Are they winning games? If the winning streak continues, I think, yes, we will see Dulcich. If the Broncos somehow lose some games and they're out of the playoff race, then I don't think they will see Dulcich back at all this season. So I think that is something that we'll continue to monitor here at milehighsports.com. And I'll see on top of that, good morning, Broncos. But with all that said, Broncos country, really, 
they were getting ready to head into the weekend. The Broncos getting ready to take on the Houston Texans, 11 o'clock a.m., Mountain Time kickoff. To recap some of the major notes of today's show, the Broncos-Lions game flexed to 6.15 p.m. Mountain Time NFL Network on December 16th. Another primetime game here for the Broncos. Will Lutz named AFC Special Teams Player of the Month for the Broncos and for the NFL for his efforts of going 11 for 11 on field goals attempted and made in the month of November as the Broncos went undefeated in November and are set to play meaningful football here throughout December. But with that said, I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos Country. Appreciate you so much for rocking with us, hanging with us here today on GMB. So we'll catch you on Monday for the GMB post game report. All the recap from Sunday's action. You're going to get that on Good Morning Broncos Monday morning. We'll see you then. What's up, guys? Kim Becker here with Mile High Sports. Make sure you guys are following us on social media so that you never miss a Mile High Sports daily. Monday through Friday morning, we'll post a video hosted by me catching you up on everything you need to know when it comes to sports right here in the Mile High State. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we're there, and we've got you covered for everything Colorado sports.